So a few years ago, I ended up doing a video talking about what I knew at the time to be the easiest way to share files between different computers on your local area network or your home network. And since then, I've done a little bit of fiddling with remote desktop stuff. And through that, I actually ended up finding a solution to one of the biggest problems with the local network sharing that I ended up having to do some kind of workaround where I had to create an additional local account in order to do the network sharing properly. Now, we don't have to do this anymore. I found an alternative, so I thought I would redo the video. And yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into it. So I'm gonna be doing this entire video on Windows 11. Uh, it just makes things a little bit easier. Windows 10 end of life is at the end of this year. And to be honest, most of the stuff is gonna be the same. The UI may look different, but the names of everything, the settings, all that kind of stuff, and the way that you get to it is pretty similar. So you should be able to follow along if you're using Windows 10. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and go to the network advanced sharing settings. So we're just gonna type in advanced and you should get something that says manage advanced sharing settings. If not, you can go ahead and go to your network and internet. You go to advanced network settings and then you would find your advanced sharing settings. Now here, what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that this file and printer sharing is on. You wanna make sure that your network discovery is on and you wanna make sure that we wanna have password protected sharing on. We want this so that if people wanna access our files, they need to have permissions to do so. We don't want everybody to have access to these files. Now, if you want to, you can also do public folder sharing. What a public folder is, is that it is a folder outside of your particular user. So it's kind of like a generic user. So if we go to our users here, we can see I have two users and then I have a public one. And if you want to, you can set it up so that everything within public is shared and things within your particular user are not. I'm not gonna go that route, but it is an option. So another thing here is that you can set it up so that your computer works on a public network, but I highly suggest that your own personal computers in your own home should be set up as a private network device. If you don't know if your computer is on a public or private network when you set it up, again, you just go ahead and head back to network and internet and you go to your properties, and then here you can change it from public to private. Um, relatively simple to get through. So make sure that you do these settings changes on any of the computers that you wanna take part in the sharing, whether they're going to be receiving files or providing files. Make sure that they all have these settings on. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and share two different ways. We're gonna share a folder, and then we're gonna share an entire drive. Um, I personally like sharing entire drives because they're my own computers, makes things really, really easy, and I can just kind of access things whenever I need to. I do a lot of sharing between my two computers, especially my gaming computer and my streaming computer. My gaming computer is also my editing PC, and my streaming computer records all of these videos here, and then I grab those files from that computer, put them on my gaming computer, and then edit with them, um, and it just makes life quite a bit easier. Since we're already within the users folder, let's go ahead and share a folder first. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my user and we're gonna share the pictures folder here. So we're gonna right click on that. We're gonna go down to properties. We're gonna go to sharing. And now it is already saying that my folder is shared. Normally it would say that it's not being shared and you wouldn't have a network path here. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and go to advanced sharing. We're gonna go to share and it's gonna be shared as pictures. If you want this address to be something differently, uh, something different, you can change the name of that and it would change the network path name. So change it to whatever you want. And in permissions, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set this to full control. And it's saying that this is for everyone, but again, they are gonna need a password to get into there or they should at least, we'll find out when we go ahead and try to connect to this computer through one of my other PCs. But I want full control so that I can uh, cut and paste files, I can create folders, I can move things around, I can delete files if I need to without having to actually be on that computer, so that's pretty awesome. We're gonna go ahead and press OK, press OK, and now again, this is the important thing, the network path. So it is being shared as SSF White Pictures. So we will keep that in mind when we go ahead and connect to it. Now let's go ahead and share a drive as well. This is something that I personally do quite a bit, and you'll see that when we hop onto my gaming PC but we're gonna go ahead and share the Y3000 here. So we're gonna right click on that. We're gonna to go to properties, 
sharing, advanced sharing, share this folder, and the same kind of principle here. You can change the name if you want to. We're gonna go ahead and go to permissions, full control, and there is our name for the full drive. All right, so we're on my gaming PC. We can already see that I have a drive from my server PC, which is where I grab all the video files when editing all these videos. Um, I use that one all the time and I'll show you how I use that a little bit later, but we're gonna go ahead and connect to the drives that we set up. Now, I realized that I had already done the fix on the small, small form factor computer that we just did all of the sharing stuff set up on, but I also have my laptop here, which I have not done the fix on yet. So we're gonna go ahead and connect to that. Everything's kind of set up the exact same way. So there's no changes there. It's just gonna be a different name when we go ahead. And there's two ways that we can go ahead and connect to those drives or folders that we set up. We can either go ahead and hit the network tab and drill through the computer that way, or my preferred method is mapping it as a network drive. That way it stays as a network location. You can go ahead and pin that to your quick access like you can see I've done here. It just makes things a lot easier and you don't have to constantly remember to drill back down into everything. It just makes things a little bit quicker if it's something that you're gonna be accessing all the time. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna to go to the see more. We're gonna map network drive. We're gonna type in the name of our device. So since I'm doing the laptop, it's gonna be Dimitri Legion. And then you put another backslash and then I did the D drive on here. So it's gonna be D and we're gonna go ahead and press finish. Now it's gonna tell me it's trying to connect. And we should get a login pop up here. And here we go. So if you're using a local account and you're not using a Microsoft account, this is extremely simple. You just type in the username and password that you use to log into your computer and you're all set to go. However, if you're using a Microsoft account, this is where a little bit of the complication comes in and where that fix comes in as well. And I know that I haven't done the fix on this laptop yet, so we are gonna run into an issue. But normally what you would do is you would use the email that you log into or that's attached to the account that is logged into the PC. And you go ahead and put that password for the email, not the pin or what have you that you use to log into the PC, but it is the email and password for that email that you would use to log into your Microsoft account. And we were gonna go ahead and press remember my credentials, even though I know it's not gonna work, we're gonna go ahead and press okay. It's gonna attempt to connect. So it's telling me that the password is incorrect. I know the password is correct though, because I've done this multiple times before. So this is where the fix comes in and we have to go ahead and run that fix. So our fix is relatively simple. All we have to do is end up running a command that will kind of push our password through to the user kind of key base and it allows us to then properly log in. It's not very complicated. It takes no time at all. This is our command here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna replace this username at example.com with your username uh, or your email address. And then we go ahead and type in our password and you'll see that in a second. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and do the run system. And I'm gonna go ahead and type that in with my email address. And it should go ahead and open a command prompt for us. And now it's very simple. All we have to do is type in the password for that email address. And it'll say all this stuff. And if you get this pop-up here, the about windows that kind of says that the product license is all here, and you just get this little pop-up, that means it should be successful. So if we go back over to the gaming PC, we should be able to not change anything and our password should be good to go. So here we are back on the gaming PC. We're not gonna make any changes here. I'm just gonna go ahead and press remember my credentials. We may have to do a restart, but hopefully not. And we're just gonna go ahead and press okay. And there we go, our fix worked. So this avoided the whole situation I had to do last time where I had to create local accounts specifically for sharing. Now you don't have to have a bunch of local accounts on your, your system. You can just go ahead and use that little fix. It has definitely made a big difference. This was also a fix for me doing remote desktop connections because that same password situation existed there. So once I figured that out, I was like, oh, maybe this also works for the network file stuff and it did. So pretty awesome.
All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the folder. Now the process is the exact same as the drive, but we're gonna to connect to the small form factor computer that we had set up earlier. Now the name for that computer is incorrect. It is SSF instead of what it should be is SFF. I'm too lazy to change it, but again, similar process what we did for the drive. We're gonna to go to map network drive. And if you've connected to one before, it'll actually be in the drop down here, which is extremely handy. And my small, my small form factor is here. We're gonna go ahead and change this though. And this is gonna be pictures because that's the folder that we had set up. And if you've already connected to that one for file sharing, you don't have to re-enter your username and password. It should grab the credentials already and be good to go unless you press this connect using different credentials and you can log in using a different user if you want to but I'm not gonna do that. I've already connected to it. I don't need to go ahead and put the password in again. So if you're doing multiple folders or multiple drives on the same PC, you don't have to constantly be typing in your password all the time. So that's really handy. We're gonna go ahead and press finish. And there we go. It adds really quickly and doesn't really take much time at all. Now, if you wanna disconnect any of these, all you have to do is just right click on it and disconnect it. And it'll disconnect real, real easy. And now I mentioned the second way is going into the network tab. So if we go into the network, and then if I go into the small form factor, it is just gonna allow me to drill down into any folder that has been set to share. So the Q drive, that whole drive is set to share so I can access it there. And then the pictures folder is set to share and any other thing that I set to share individually will appear in here. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you how I end up using this on a regular basis to edit my videos. So again, I have the J drive here, and then I have my YouTube folder here. And in here, I have a whole bunch of MKVs from OBS from when I'm doing my recordings like this right now, it is currently recording in OBS to this folder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna open up my editing SSD, and in there I have an editing folder and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder and let's call this one demo, why not? Go ahead and open that up and we're gonna grab this one from February. Go ahead and cut that and I'm gonna paste it here. I can copy it and paste it, I can cut it and paste it, I can do whatever I want because I did those full access. If I did read only, I'd only be able to copy and paste. I wouldn't be able to cut it. I wouldn't be able to delete it or do anything like that. And that's kind of it. Now, if I wanted to, I could technically edit it directly through that network connection. And I could just drag one of these files onto my timeline and do that. But I found that it was just causing some performance issues. It wasn't working entirely great. So that's why I moved them onto a local SSD in order to edit off of. And for example, you know, for my recent uh, Insta360 Opspot video, you can go ahead once this goes ahead and load because there's a lot of stuff in here and all of this stuff, everything that's an MKV was brought over from my streaming PC. And then I go ahead and throw it into my timeline and do all my editing and all that kind of stuff. So I, again, it's something that I use on a regular basis. It is extremely, extremely handy. I use it a lot. I don't think my workflow would work the same way if I didn't have this. Um, technically, I could just drag things over to the NAS, for example, and then drag them off or you know, use a cloud service or something like that, but this just makes life so much easier. It's very quick. Um, you know, We moved over that pretty large file. This was 5.35 gigs and it moved over in maybe like just under a minute. So, it moves things really, really quickly. You don't have to grab USBs and do all that kind of stuff. I personally think it's the best way to share files between computers in your local network. If they're all using Windows, this is just the easiest way to do so. And with all that said, I really do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them all as quickly as I can. Big thanks to my patron sponsors and big thanks to you for watching to the end of this video. If you do wanna see any other videos where I talk about tips and tricks for your PC, you can go ahead and check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.